So we hit 100k subscribers. Thank you all very much, because you're the reason that this happens. I feel like sometimes content creators have the mentality that their viewers are lucky to have them, but I don't really view it that way. I view it as, if it wasn't for you guys watching and doing all the stuff that you do, then I wouldn't be here right now. So thank you very much. Um, now saying all of that, I'm going to tear myself down for this entire video because I figure why not for 100k just remember some of the opinions that I've had over the years with the NBA that I can remember, I'm sure there's more, that I got flat out wrong where I look back on it and I go, what the hell was I talking about? And we might as well start with the last couple of NBA finals, which I've gotten like all of those wrong. There was a thing on Twitter a while back about Stephen A. Smith getting like seven finals in a row incorrect. I'm pretty sure I've gotten like the last seven finals incorrect as well. So I'm right there with Stephen A. This previous one, I picked the Cavs in seven. What the hell was wrong with me? I think that one was like me really wanting the series to be good, but... I mean, come on, like, the best player in the series was LeBron, of course, but then after that, the next, like, well, the next two, at least, were, um, were, were on the Warriors, I mean, you still had Kyrie Irving at that point, so you weren't, like, too drastic in terms of, like, the top four guys, but, I mean, Golden State was clearly the better team, right? I mean, the Cavaliers just, defensively, there was no way they were going to compete with the Warriors, that's exactly what happened. And for whatever reason, I said to myself, you know what? I think they have a chance. So, I don't I don't know. I think the, the biggest difference with that series was that Tristan Thompson just wasn't good. And I think a lot of that was because Zaza can just box him out, right? So I probably overlooked that. I think I really thought Tristan Thompson was just going to be a force in that series, and he wasn't. But nonetheless, like, what was I doing with that one? The year before, I picked the Warriors in seven. Now, to my credit, they lost in, like, the last minute of Game 7 off of two of the biggest plays in NBA history, the Kyrie Irving three and the LeBron James block, but I got that wrong nonetheless. So that's at least the last two finals. I don't remember the ones before that, but I've got two in a row now, so that's cool. If we're sticking to some of the best teams in the league and we go to the Houston Rockets... The year that they won 56 games and got to the conference finals, I didn't even think they were going to make the playoffs because my reasoning was, oh yeah, they're all offense, no defense. I sounded like a 45-year-old talking about 80s basketball with that sort of thing. Like, what? If you're a great offensive team and you're at least not all-time bad on defense, you're going to win like 46 games. I mean, it was James Harden surrounded by Eric Gordon, Ryan Anderson, Trevor Ariza, like they had actual shooters, and they win 56 games. I think Houston managed to be, what, 22nd in defense that year? And that was that was about all they really needed. And I, I don't know why I believe that they would be, like, dead last on defense. Because it was like, well, they have Ariza, they have Capella, they have Nene. Eric Gordon is actually, like, not a bad defensive player, even though he's kind of short. Like, that's enough to get by on defense, so I was dead wrong on that one. Um, for that same season, I thought the T-Wolves would be the 8th seed. I don't know why I was hopping on the train of them just figuring it out immediately. Because even though I know they got Tom Thibodeau as the coach and all that, but you can't just flip a switch and have a bunch of young dudes be good on defense all of a sudden, right? And that was when they had Zach Levine still, so you were really a, a super young team. There was no way that they were going to do it that quickly, but I thought they were going to be like a 40-something win team and Thibodeau was just going to transform them on defense. And I didn't realize that the personnel that Thibodeau had when he flipped the Bulls switch, like he already had Luau Deng, he had Joe Kim Noah, like he had good defenders already who had been in the league. But for whatever reason, me thinking, oh yeah, these T-Wolves are going to make the jump this season, definitely did not do that. I'm sure there's a whole bunch of these that I... Just can't remember off the top of my head. There was a whole bunch of my GM things along the years that I will also um, talk about a little bit. Let's see, one time I said Dwayne Wade should come off the bench. And this is when he was like still pretty good. My reasoning was, well he can't shoot threes and all that. And it's like, I mean he's D-Wade, he, like, he figures stuff out, right? 
he can cut, he can attack a closeout, but maybe I just didn't realize that inside scoring is still pretty valuable, even if you're not as good of a three-point shooter. Um, one time I said the Celtics should trade Avery Bradley for Willie Colley Stein. My thinking being, oh yeah, Stein's good on defense. Like Bradley's not good on defense. Also, Willie Colley Stein has proven to be not good. He's showing some signs for Sacramento, sure, but defensively he's been a disappointment, even though he's got some athleticism, and I think he's been pretty okay at finishing, but I mean, that would have been a pretty disastrous trade for the Celtics to move an established two guard for a guy who didn't play in the NBA yet and there were questions about him then and those questions have been kind of realized at this point. This isn't me getting something wrong but it's kind of funny. I made a video once called why John Wall is an elite NBA point guard. It's apparently 10 and a half minutes long. Who the hell needs to watch a 10 and a half minute video to know that John Wall's good? I could have just made that five seconds and gone, hey, John Wall's really good. Okay, that's the video for you. Also, can we talk about some of my old thumbnails and how the text is so small that you can't see it at all? I guess in the thumbnail maker, I use GIMP to make thumbnails. It looks pretty good when it's on 100% zoom, but then I forget that on YouTube it's a little teeny box. I finally picked that up like two weeks ago. Also, I have to point out some of the titles of my old MyGM videos. Like, I really didn't give a crap. I kind of give a crap now. I really didn't care back in the day. Like, one of these... Let's look. Let's go down some of these titles. Um, for the 76ers my GM, are we going to upset the Cavs or feels bad man? I literally put like an emoji on Twitch or an emote on Twitch in the title of a YouTube video. There was... We made additions to help our team and I don't know man. As opposed to now where I'll be like, who do we draft? And it's like an official looking title. There's a whole bunch of meme titles in all my old MyGMs. Let's talk about some of the MyGMs that were full of crap. Emmanuel Moutier becoming Michael Jordan in the Nugget series. That was absolutely ridiculous. Also, that Nuggets team had was nowhere near talented enough to win the championship. Thon Maker was a defensive god, which, like, he's pretty okay on perimeter defense, kind of, right now, but for what he was, was basically like Dikembe Mutombo on steroids. You had Justin Anderson becoming a three-point specialist, whereas now, like, I mean, the dude's got little offensive game to him. Nigel Hayes was, like, your stretch four from heaven. He's, I don't even think he's... He's, I don't think he was drafted in the NBA. He might have been drafted by the Knicks, actually. And I don't know if he's in the G League or if he's overseas. He might not have been picked by the Knicks at all, but I remember seeing something like that. Of course, there was the famous uh, Dennis Schroeder for Joel Embiid trade, which, I mean, if that happened now, that would just be my god. That would be like GMs getting fired over that sort of thing. Also, just one of my actually more popular videos, what if Russell Westbrook was drafted by the Miami Heat? In that video, I make it to where Westbrook learns how to shoot to be able to play with LeBron and D-Wade and all them, but then Kevin Love never gets good on defense for the OKC Thunder. Kind of an overlook on my part, if you will. Okay, I have to point out this uh, My GM title. I know I'm all over the place, but this was for the 76ers My GM, uh, which came out in July 21st of 2016. Our defense is so bad, I might trade the whole team next year. We gotta be honest, my title game has fallen off. Like, these are some genius titles for videos. Going through some more videos, my reaction to the Cavaliers um, winning the 2016 finals, it's a horrible thumbnail. Like, there's no picture of LeBron holding up a trophy at all. Like, I, I, let's be real here, I could have gotten way more views than 24,000 on that video if the thumbnail actually looked like my reaction to the finals and not just like some basketball game that was played on a Tuesday or whatever. I think I made a video in 2016 talking about how the Lakers could make the playoffs right after Luke Walton was signed there. Me, me two years ago, I loved putting young teams in the playoffs. Now I hate young teams and I don't think they're ever going to be good. So... 
maybe I learned my lesson, but even then, like, there's always going to be the outliers. I mean, look at the 76ers this season, right? Um, I, I'm pretty sure I picked them to make the playoffs this year. I mean, my caveat, as it was for everyone, is how healthy is Joel Embiid, of course. Now, to be fair, none of us saw what was going to be happening with Markel Fultz, right? So, we'll see what happens with them. Another trend that I'm noticing, because I'm, I'm just going down my list of videos at this point. Every, like, six months, I make some video about the Wizards based around... Can they break out of mediocrity? Can they fix themselves? And they do it like every year. So maybe I should just stop making that video. I mean, hell, I just a week ago or so, I made a video talking about, oh yeah, you know, I think they're going to fall apart without John Wall. And now Sadoransky is just leading them on a charge with his low usage point guarding ways. Although Buddy Heald's playing a lot of minutes. Or not Buddy Heald. Bradley Beal's playing a lot of minutes. So that's a little scary, but... I, I need to just relax on the Wizards, I think. Also, while I'm scrolling down, I actually see the very short-lived Ben Simmons My Career series. The hell was that? What was I... Why, why did I want to do that? Like, the My Career genre of YouTube, there are certain qualities you need to really be entertaining in that genre. None of which of those qualities I have, okay? Like, you gotta have th more entertainment value in terms of like editing and just being generally funnier I think and I just don't think I really have those qualities I mean I'm more about being super nerdy and talking about the the net rating of every team's backup small forward I mean if you want to go to my career you're going to Chris Smoove you're going to Stax Montana you're going to King Sean you're going to a lot of people before you go to me for my career let's be honest here uh bouncing back to the Nugget series First off, can we appreciate the thumbnails that I had for the MyGMs for a long time where I used the stock photo of, it was actually like Detroit's skyline or something? I would like you to think that it was the skyline of the city that we were playing. No, it wasn't at all. Um, and then I would always have the text up top. But when we're talking about that Nugget series, how many videos were centered around me potentially trading Kenneth Fareed? And then I just never moved to the guy. It got kind of ridiculous at a certain point. Although eventually we did move him for Thad Young. And funny thing is, me at that time in 2016, I didn't understand the value of like volume and shooters. So I saw, oh yeah, we need to stretch four. Let's get Thad Young. He can shoot threes. Thad Young takes like one three a game. He's really not a stretch four at all. But... I don't know, old me believed, you know what, he shoots well from three, that means he's good, when in reality it's like, well, you might want to back up a little bit on that one. Anyway, we're at like 13, going on 14 minutes here. Am I done roasting myself? I think I am. I, I think... I think that's going to do it. Thank you all very much for 100,000 Subscribers, I appreciate it very much. We're going to keep on keeping on. And I hear that YouTube takes like 12 years to send that 100k plaque. Because whenever I see it on Twitter, people are always like, Oh yeah, I hit this like a decade ago and they finally sent it to me. So, yeah. I don't even know, how do they know where to send it? I don't remember ever typing my address into anything. Maybe they'll send me an email or something. I don't know. I'm basically rambling at this point. But um, that's going to do it. Thank you all very much. Uh, we'll get back to actual NBA stuff tomorrow. But, um, you know, you only hit 100k once. Unless I lost a bunch of subs and then I got back to 100k. But hopefully that doesn't happen. Um, so yeah, I'm out. Also, new podcast, actually. New podcast in the description. Once again, um, the hell did I talk about? Oh, that's right. It was James Harden's minutes, if he's playing too many minutes this year. And then I reminisce about Call of Duty when it was really good. Um, now I'm done. <laughs>